In this video, I will be discussing how powerful is Odin in God of War. So basically taking Odin's powers and abilities and breaking them down to see what we might find in God of War Ragnarok. And hit the like button if you're tired of waiting for God of War Ragnarok, just like I am, and I would appreciate it quite a bit. So Odin is the big bad of the God of War series in the Norse realm. From the Valkyries being turned to their physical forms and locked away so that the dead would swarm Midgard, to basically the complete slaughter of all the giants pretty much everywhere, especially in Midgard. But to do all of this and be the all-father of an entire realm, well, if you don't count killing his grandfather Ymir for the control over the realm, but that's an entirely different thing. This god has to have a ton of firepower behind him. So let's sit down, grab a cup of mead, and let's go over Odin's powers and abilities that we might see in God of War Ragnarok. So first, let's start off with his most obvious ability, which is Odin's immortality. Now, being a god, one that's lasted many, many, many years, almost the entirety of the Norse realm, this guy has to be immortal, or at least have an extremely long lifespan. Odin, like said before, killed his grandfather Ymir with his brothers Vili and Ve, and created Midgard out of Ymir's body, which gave birth to humans a little further down the line. So this is why he calls himself All-Father, when in fact, it's kind of Ymir, but that's kind of going off topic a little bit. Then Odin claimed to be king or ruler over the Aesir and claimed the Hall of Valhalla for himself. So yeah, this guy probably immortal or has an extremely long lifespan. Makes sense, especially being a god. Also, to go further along with this, Odin actually hung himself from the world tree Yggdrasil for nine nights and nine days to obtain knowledge that he wouldn't obtain otherwise. And there was a spear stuck inside, so... So when he did awake from his hanging nap, I guess, Odin further understood many things that he could not grasp otherwise, and he understood the runes which he created. So it's kind of plain to see that Odin is immortal, and it kind of makes me wonder how Kratos will defeat Odin, especially since Odin is immortal, and he is supposed to die by the hands of Fenrir during Ragnarok. So I guess Ragnarok needs to come and hurry up so we can finally see. The next power and ability that I want to discuss about Odin is that he is an extremely great warrior. So let me explain this one a little bit further because we mostly know Odin as a knowledge keeper, someone that uses a ton of magic and is extremely, well, creative and smart, so. But we don't hear a ton about his prowess in battle. He did learn a lot of his magic, especially his satyr magic, from when he did marry Freya after the Aesir and Vanyar War. But you have to ask yourself this question, how did Odin survive the Aesir and Vanyar War if he is not a great formidable warrior? Yes, you can also say that Odin maybe took more of a captain or general's role and stayed behind his guarded lines. But in the Norse realm, that really doesn't really work out that much. Most leaders led their people to battle. So you can safely assume Odin did as well. And I'm going to say it again. You have to be quite a warrior to take down one of the original beings of the entire Norse world. Yes, he had help, but you have to be pretty good nonetheless. Odin, formidable warrior. Yeah, you could probably check that one off as well. So the next power and ability that I want to discuss and is probably one of Odin's most known powers is his magical prowess, yes his satyr magic that he learned from Freya during their marriage. Now I'm not 100% sure if Odin knew any magic prior to being married to Freya, but there is a chance that Odin did know some magic beforehand, but just a different type. This type is actually called Galdr and it's more of a spoken uh, incantation kind of a thing. And Odin probably would have studied this nonetheless. We see this in the reference of a book called The Havamal, which is also can be translated to Words of the High One, aka Odin. It is said in The Havamal that Odin has mastered several different types of Galdr incantations that actually protects him against, well, a whole list of stuff, hold on, there are protections against fire, protections against swords, arrows, storms, and one that I thought was very interesting that he could almost do necromancy, as in be able to talk to the dead. So, Odin is no slouch when it comes to magic. So some examples of this is when Odin actually cursed and banished Freya to Midgard so she can't even fight as well, taking her warrior spirit and not even be able to defend herself or others. Another example is the Black Breath, which is actually a corruption of magic that can only be tamed through the light of Alfheim. 
Another one of his magic abilities, he can actually shapeshift as well into a small or even a huge eagle. So does this give us a hint of who is the eagle in Helheim? Maybe, maybe not. I do have my own theory about it. And it's actually right here. He can also block access to any realm that he would pretty much like. We see that in the realm travel room. Conceal events from people like he did with the uh, Jotun Groa. His curses, which I did mention before about Freya and cursing the Valkyries into physical form. And a weird little ability where he can actually absorb knowledge from people, which he also did on the Jotun Groa. So Odin, when it comes to magic, he's someone to be reckoned with. And in my opinion, this will probably be the majority of the boss fight when we eventually get to this in God of War Ragnarok. The last ability and power that I want to discuss about Odin is his extreme intelligence. Even the great bodiless Mimir even states how clever and smart Odin is. Mimir, being the smartest man alive, well, smartest reanimated head alive, but yeah, I'm getting off track again. Odin realized Mimir had tricked him, and instead of giving him a drink from Mimir's well, he gave him water laced with a metric ton of magic mushrooms that even a god would see stuff. So, what did he do about it? So Odin put Mimir in a tree for 109 winters, to which he tortured him every single day. That's a lot of days. So, can we put torture as one of Odin's great abilities? Possibly, I guess. I mean, how many days is that? That's a lot of days. Hold on. Yeah, that's a lot. That's so if it was like exactly the day, 109 winters, it would be 39,785 days straight of torture. Damn. So Odin also used his intelligence and his deceit, which might be another power out of freaking know at this point to actually get within the Jotunheim borders with Tyr. So Tyr brought Odin with him to Jotunheim to make peace with the giants, but Odin had different plans. Odin was only there to catch a glimpse of the Jotun's prophecies. So when no one was looking, Odin kind of moseyed around and found them. And by the time that he got found out, Odin learned a ton of prophecies and knowledge that the Jotun were hiding from them. So the Jotun cast him out of Jotunheim and, and almost killed Tyr for it, but yeah, good story. Odin, in my opinion, is probably going to be the hardest boss fight in God of War Ragnarok. I know many people are very excited for Thor, and don't get me wrong, I am one of those people, and I can't wait to take on Thor, but I think Odin is going to be much, much, much harder than we expect. I for sure am not underestimating Odin when Kratos and him finally meet. I want to thank you all for spending your precious time with me today. It really does mean a lot. And if you did like your time here, please hit the like button and think about subscribing for more God of War content down the road. My name is Shane Static. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.